Still going next. as first. Oh, oh, you are a prophet, my friend. Nunu going to be leaving, and that's a surprise. We'll see what Snake do. This is their flex ban. It was Scion last time. It was Karthus the time before that. They have been reacting with this final ban, and Scion worked in the last game. They're going to ban it away again here. And King, we'll see what they decide to take away. Lulu was what they did last time. I don't think it really had too much of an effect because I don't know whether Snake even looking to play that one. Yeah, it doesn't look like they are. They're very comfortable on the Azir mid lane. Barker even had a good Vlad game first game, so it looks to be that his champion pool issues kind of going away. Yeah, his champion pool issues are sort of a thing of the past here. It is going to be Janna banned. Of course, taking that away from Ella. Ella has played fantastically, but of course didn't work out for King first picking that one away, and I wonder whether this has left up anything that Snake want to snap up first. And Flandre, I have a feeling he may even just go straight to the Maokai. Yeah, it probably is going to be the first lock in there. We've seen that be Ooh. very high priority pick. Callista is the other one that Snake likes to play. Still not convinced about it against Evane, but it did work out the last game. And is there any other options? Do they think of maybe first picking the Gragas instead? But they are going to lock away the Callista, so there's no real point in talking about that. And King, is it going to be the Rek'Sai? Yeah, I think they is both be the run Nautilus? the exact same compositions. Rek'Sai and Nort will go. Yeah, sub out the Janna for the Nautilus. But oh. oh, the pick away of the Maokai. Flandre has to dig into that shot. Wait. Flandre has got a gigantic champion pool. He just likes to be a tree, ladies and gentlemen. MLXG, though, picking up the Gragas. And this is really strange because, of course, what has led King to a lot of victories is the Rek'Sai. We've been talking about it. Beast is thinking about the Lulu. Barker, the Azir. And Ella wouldn't be surprised if he went straight back to the Thresh. His box placement has been fantastic. Yeah, it's Make a brilliant has. removalist. Not going near that one, Atlas. No problem. No problem. i got to offer these things up at game five, though, in case you want to just sort of mindlessly take it. King, though, now their options. It is going to be locked away here, the Azir and the Thresh. Assassin had a brilliant game on that Cassidy and Liam going back towards that Nautilus once more. It is going to be locked in, as is the Cassidy. No problems at all. No fear here from Assassin. Yeah, certainly isn't, and so far, I have a much stronger mid-game lineup, you have to yeah. say, coming through. And so much sort of separation and then lockdown coming through from this team as well. I mean, if they throw through that explosive cask, Assassin can launch on them. Wushin can lock them down. Sky can also lock them down here. And Snake now thinking about what they want to go with. Top lane Lulu is being considered, unless that's a top lane Azir. But no, not going to be the case. And back on the NAR is Flandre. Game one, his NAR performance was interesting early on, of course, thinking that he was maybe a little bit tankier than he actually was. But in the end, his NARs were beautiful. Yeah, it certainly was. And they go the NAR Rexa. So they have a wombo combo of their own coming through here. Fate's call into NAR, into Rexa, knock up. That's CC for a very long time. I want to see the NAR into the Emperor's Divide, though, the bouncy castle for real. Yeah. That's a possibility. They're both in the game. Yeah, true. Look, thank you. All right, my dreams may be realized. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Liam, though, is considering a Graves for Woosh. Don't give me that cheeky grin. A much more aggressive carry coming through from Woosh. Surprise, no. though. Go on. Woof. I was getting nervous Let's there for throw a second. Let's curveball <laughs> in with the Vayne pickup. Woosh, going to be taking Vayne five games in a row. And that is a sign of zero fear. Into Crystal, though, on this Callista, it didn't go too badly in the last game. Of course, went fantastically in game two. And Snake, this is a, sort of a mismatch of a whole lot of different things, but Beast now is on the wreck side. Beast now has the ability to move around this map early on and affect the lanes. We'll see whether he can have the same level of impact that MLXG had. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you got an Azir and a Rek'Sai ganking yeah. a cast in an early game. That's much more scary. And We'll have to see where the King dodged the duo lane again, of course. Nah and Maokai kind of much of a muchness in the lane swap as we see that as our first head-to-head. -head. In the lane, Flandre will do completely fine. Well, Flandre also knows back and forth over this Maokai as well as Beast. This is the opposite matchup of the last three games. And Barker now going to be trying a similar style here against Assassin. Dangerous because, of course, Assassin navigated that laning phase beautifully and 
It was Bristol a head by 20 CS. Exactly. You did better than that, and we see. I said beautifully. You did well. It's a good thing. But Hook was, City in the bottom lane again. I was talking about the navigation. He kind of just ran through. Oh, right. Didn't really need much navigating. No. Yeah, no problem there at all. But we are going to have a pause leading into this game very, very briefly. But, man, I mean, this is a culmination of a whole lot of different factors that worked out both really, really well for these teams and badly. So we'll just see how it works out because a lot of these things have been switched over. Of course, Maokai now going over to the hands of King. We'll see how that works. But Rek'Sai in the hands of Beast. This is where I think it's really all going to come down to because MLXG has had his best performances in the LPL on Rek'Sai. I'm, I'm happy to say that. Yeah, definitely. But I'm happy to also say that Beast has had his worst performances... Not on Gragas, Nunu, or Jarvan. Yeah, on anything other than those champions. Yes. yes. So, uh, whilst MLXG going away from his comfort zone, Beast is definitely out of his comfort zone right now. And I think that the champions that they did pick away, probably two of the more important lanes. Flandre, he's just been that huge tank. Yeah. MLXG, now he's going to be able to disrupt the back line, maybe clear out some space for Woosh, split up the team fight, give him some clear priorities to be able to hit. So you understand the pickaways, they're not just mindless pickaways, they actually make sense. Yeah, well, of course. But look, MLXG hasn't really showed too much prowess on the Gragas as well, as far as that pickaway is concerned. So, I mean, you're talking up King's pickaway ability. Pickaway ability. I don't really know. Was that one word or two? I'm not sure. I think it's hyphenated. <laughs> hyphenated. Yeah, we'll go with hyphenated on that one. I think one thing that's very, very scary, though, is Liam getting the Nautilus again. Yeah, I actually think that the Janna ban suited them because Nautilus yeah. seems to be a very important pickup in this series. I like the initiation. The third pseudo tank, also really important. Yeah, well, true. And we'll see whether he manages to make the same effect because the vain Nautilus lane has looked fantastic. But ladies and gentlemen, game five. Let's get on the rift. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, the final game, game five. Everything tied up here between Snake and King. And you can see defensive fan, no early vision going to be attempted here for either team as it's all on the line. Nerve's definitely going to play a factor in this one. Yeah, a little bit more aggression coming out of the Snake lineup this time around. They're looking for an early invade. It will be spotted by a cheeky... Wow. Spotted by a cheeky snap... Sapling? Snapling? I'd give up talking. No, don't do that. No one wants to listen to me for this entire game. I promise you that. So we'll see them give up on that one. They did su spot out Nautilus in the bottom lane with a nice ward placed on the red buff. And stop laughing at me, please. <laughs> I liked you saying supporterless, though, by accident. That was really good. Because, of course, that is exactly what he is. I think you've nailed it. First CS landing here for Lamb on that Sentinel as well. I didn't actually know that that registered. Exciting. It certainly does. 10 gold. Yeah. Well, of course, it gives you 10 gold, but I didn't know that it put a point into your little CS number. Even wards give you CS. Do they? Yeah, pretty sure. Wow. Coded as a minion. Well, come on. That takes all the magic out of it. I don't know if it actually is. As we see, a very <laughs> deep invade coming through. Beast takes half of his health from some saplings. Yep, knock-up going to land onto the red buff there, but it takes so much damage. You're exactly right. He's going to be smarting this one away, so he's not going to die here, but it's going to help, it's going to deter, sorry, his early clear. It's Flandre helping him out. Three members as well taking the red buff on the other side as Hillbilly Gragas smacking his belly up against this one. Sentinel not actually going to discover anyone, but does know that there's nothing in there, which is good. Lane swap succeeded here by King, it looks like. I mean, by Snake, sorry, it looks like. Yeah, so Snake go for the lane matchup here. They've got a very deep freeze going as well. Crystal just going to little, yep, gets a very minimum last hit through there. So I think he had six ca uh, caster creeps coming up. I don't think any of his died. One of Wuxia's died. Means the freeze is a little bit deeper in the top lane. Uh-huh, beautiful. Learning a little bit more about these lane freezes as Barker has hit level two, but King going for a super early dragon here at three minutes in. Answering exactly what Snake did in the last game, sort of what happens when you've got a man advantage towards that bottom side, but they're letting Woosh pick up the early 
sort of extra levels here in this lane by hanging around. And that was something Snake didn't do here for Crystal. Yeah, certainly is. So we'll see how that one works out exactly. Sky, he's still level one, so really can't go back to his lane yet. Flandre, he's level two. We'll see whether he gets any support as these mid laners have been isolated one more time. Seems to be going this time in Barker's favor as he gets a little bit of a push on. But they've sent a lot of members mid, maybe looking for a pick. They're looking for something, of course, with four people just hanging around, hanging about around these Raptors. Ella here as well, giving Crystal some solo experience here in the top lane. Not quite as important as getting it on the vein, but still definitely going to work out here onto Callista. Able to get that Fates call very, very soon. Sort of gives Ella the option of having an ultimate before having the option of an ultimate, which is pretty cool. Barker able to pressure out Assassin just a little bit, get some damage in before the shield comes down. So that's definitely going to be working out. But so far, Assassin's shown that Kassadin fine in the laning matchup here against Barker, and we've seen this go definitely horribly wrong for the Kassadin, and MLXG making his way around doesn't have a whole lot of mana, and Barker found himself uncomfortable, but Flandre, pseudo 2v2, here on the bottom side with Beast. They're going to try and keep the freeze here. They're trying to hold it off the way, uh, uh, turret, and they will manage to do that, so this lane's still going to be relatively frozen in that bottom lane, not going to push back just yet. Yeah, Beast with double buff, still a force to be reckoned with as Flandre went toe-to-toe -to -toe just a little. Does have double the CS though of Sky moving forward, able to hang out in this way, in this lane. And Mark is getting bullied. Assassin zoned him off that cannon creep. Able to pick up his own in response. Advantage Kassin. That's cannon crazy. Creep, so important. I just find it, it's just, it looks like a different lane when, when it's Assassin, Assassin's yeah. Kassin. Maybe it looks like a different lane when it's Rookies as here. I didn't want to say it like that. But look, it, it's very true as Spike well. Spike as here outside of lane looks fantastic. Oh, but it's just, of course, you have mentioned that Rookie is probably one of the best laning mid laners in the LPL. Yeah, he's, and that's the thing. Like, the thing about mid laners, you kind of look at them and you say, are these guys laning? Which Bucket definitely isn't. We already talked about how he prefers to farm up on a lot of his champions. Or are they laners? And Rookie, with his sub 10 minute turrets, definitely seems to be a laner as well. Assassin, he's in trouble. Yeah, it's the flash knockup coming through from Beast. Looking for the early gank. Only level 5 on Assassin, who's used that flash already. The Ignite's there, Snake. Might have to back off though as Snake, uh, Sky, sorry, making his way around. He's going to be Ella spotting out Gragas here, moving down the jungle, and that was so, so close. But perfect timing from Snake, but they just didn't quite manage to make it work. Yeah, not able to get the last couple of hits through that would have secured it for them. Assassin had to use Flash though, which means the return gank is so attractive for the Rek'Sai. Just loves to be able to get in there. Is level six, however. So might have missed an opportunity there in the end. Well, that's what I sort of meant, is that level 5 only had the flash to escape, but now Riftwalk, especially with the change, a little bit more reliable. Yeah, it definitely is. And take a look at the bottom lane now. They're completely zoning Flandre away. They have to be able to do something because Sky can't go to his lane. Callista has that completely frozen still. Yeah, there is some wards getting cleared out by MLXG here as well. Firing Prey Seekers relentlessly into this team as Flandre gets at least one there and bounces over the top of Beast, who's going to clear out the ward. And Woosh now tries to clear this one out yet again. Dragon not up yet. As Crystal, you can see, just holding this wave as far away as he can. Yeah, certainly is. He actually drags it back even further. That just restarts how deep the freeze is going to be. Unfortunately, misses that pierce, so we're not able to pick up the CS, but this is fantastic news for Snake. They've started in a position whereby Sky, who needs to be this tank, just has no options to farm. He can't farm anywhere. Yeah, and now they've got three members breaking the freeze in the bottom side of the map as well, with no option to do the same around it. MLXG looking for Ella here, who just gets condemned to safety and hauls out her friend too. Yeah, so His able friend. to get out of there. Ella had to burn Flash to be able to get away. You also think that they might be setting up for a second dragon as Feast, once again, snakes pathing sometimes in their jungle, really questionable. Questionable or just overconfident? Uh, little okay. from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> I like it, I like it, the diplomatic response. Pink Ward is being guarded though by Lamb and Woosh zoning away. He's taking a lot of damage from these creeps. Yeah, he's going to be auto-attacking a little bit, of course. 
with the lane frozen exactly where it is, there's not really much hope for Flandre to be able to come up. And Assassin, he's the beneficiary of this. He burned his summoner spells and still able to stay extremely aggressive in the mid lane. Still half of the... Wow, that was a really bad CSing tactic. <laughs> still half of the uh, cooldown of heal available. So in the next couple of minutes, if he's able to get some harass down, might be able to get a kill to stick in this uh, mid lane. And it looks like Crystal actually wanting to possibly head back relatively soon. Sky's made it into this top side. You can see Crystal's broken his own freeze as the sapling in it. Give him a little bit of a love tap there and L up paying Barker a visit there in the mid lane. Very even in this mid. Like, it's, it's not exactly like Barker's losing the lane, but the fact that Assassin's always seems to be able to consistently hold his own here on this cast and against the Azir is very, very impressive. We don't need to go into that again, because we've had that conversation many, many times. Sand Soldier's going to do some work, though, clearing out these minions. You can see Assassin. I mean, it's not no damage coming through from these Sand Soldiers. No, it certainly isn't. And turns out that on the side of Snake, they value getting Flandre back into a good position more than they value keeping Sky behind. So they reverse the lanes back, maybe hoping that Flandre can do his best to bully Maokai, who of course is still melee, so will struggle in the matchup regardless, but they have stopped that freeze. You felt like they could have continued it for as long as they wanted. Yeah. King couldn't even push in on them, so it wasn't like they were at risk of losing multiple objectives. And in the end, yeah, as I said, they the teams just have two different priorities. King seemed to be all about keeping Flandre behind, and Snake seemed to not care where Sky is at the, a certain part of the game, instead just playing their game plan. Well, I mean, that's often the best way to go about it. Make sure that you're not being dictated to on the Rift. And that's been a lot of how Snake have managed to create such a fantastic season for themselves. It's yeah. because they sort of change up how other teams have to play the game and makes them uncomfortable from the get-go. Yeah, it certainly does. So we'll have to see how that works out as we see a Sightstone being picked up for Rek'Sai versus maybe the... Uh, not maybe, definitely the Barmy Cinder coming through there for Gragas. And... That means that currently Gragas a little bit more combat stat effective, be able to farm the jungle maybe a little bit quicker, although Rek'Sai's kit inherently very good at that. But the vision they can put around this dragon means that they might be able to secure the second one. Yeah, and this has been sort of not the story so far. It's been one team sort of having a shutout here as Beast. Going to pop up and just have a look around after MLXG managed to body slam his way to safety. But as you mentioned, vision control around this dragon definitely owned by Snake. The yep. dragon going to be available. It has been up for quite some time, the last four minutes or so. Yeah, so they're able to get in there, start that one up. First dragon, of course, went across to King. Teleport coming through for both top laners. Yeah, Flandre getting there first, though. Has a lot of Narva here as Beast locks down the dragon. There's the Empress Divide as well as Sky bounced out of this one, which going to get exhausted, but it's ran out now. We'll see whether the Vayne can get any work done as Assassin. Beautiful Force Pulse over the top. As Liam now might be caught out, forced to use that Flash Sky. Very, very low. Barker over the top. Able to get some consistent damage down. No one going to die, but the dragon goes to Snake. Yeah, so only one objective picked up from Snake. They have the inside lane on the mid lane, so they might be able to rotate across and get some damage done. But once again, Beast, extremely aggressive in the jungle, might get aggressed on. Maybe. The Q was there from Assassin. Not quite doing all that much damage. Of course, only the blasting one there for the AP, but... See if he manages to get out and clear these minions. He's going to be able to do so. Of course, Rift Walk and Force Pulse going to do some work. AoE, clearing those out underneath the turret, and they're not going to lose that one. Flandre is backing in a... Not exactly the best position if he wanted to actually let that one go through, but Standard Lane's going to be erupting yet again. Yeah, it certainly is, and you see a big minion wave in the top lane. If, uh, <clears throat> sorry, Sky can get that one pushed out. Might be able to do his best to equalize the CS advantage that Flandre was able to pick up. So that's fantastic news for King. And Hook lands in the bottom. Yeah, Descent's on the land there as well. Didn't decide to take the lantern. And first blood going to Crystal. That was a point blank death sentence there from Ella. And that was just a well coordinated gang, sort of. Looked like another day in the office. Yeah, certainly did. That's, uh, 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 sorry, that's Liam not respecting Ella or Beast as a threat in this matchup. And you see that they're now in a position to be able to take a turret, although Ella takes a lot of damage. Might have hurt her team a little bit there because not going to be able to do anything. Yeah, MLXG actually down here in this bottom side and with Ella only on about 500 health. Not able to follow up on that turret take, but they do get first blood and they get it onto their Callista as well, who now has 
Slightly larger chunk of change to go back to base with as MLXG going to be tanking up these minions in order to stop some backs, but Crystal did make it back there safely and has picked up a recurve bow as well as Flandre. About to transform into that Meganar. He's going to do so. And in the mid lane, King paying a little bit of attention here, but Barker did use his flash, but not going to die. So able to get away from there, and we'll see exactly how this laning phase, uh, phase now uh, comes out because we've nearly got a Hurricane finished on Callista versus the Blade of the Ruined King on Vayne. And this seems to be where Vayne wants to fight a little bit more in her lane. Exhaust nearly available once again for both supports. So we'll see if that has an impact on the fight. But Liam, you feel if he's the one that goes aggressive, starts it up in the favor of Woosh. However, if Ella able to hit another one of those bar, uh, those hooks, the death sentence coming through there is in good position. Oh, there's another one. The box there as well, forcing the flash immediately. Depth charge going to get double knock up. But that's a lot of damage onto the vein. Woosh takes a lot from that. Didn't have the condemn available to get rid of anyone. And Snake, you can see that their confidence definitely backed this game. Yeah, certainly is. And that was the panic hit. Every button coming through from Lan. He exhausted. He used his ultimate, everything at the exact same time to try and get them out of Wush's face when Wush had probably saved himself by condemning away the Callista. Yeah. And of course, I mean, it was a decent death sentence there from Ella, so still credit to him, but probably an overreaction. But it's always better to be safe than sorry, Spawn. It certainly is. We'll see if the loss of summoner spells in the bottom lane does hurt them out. Assassin still having a relatively good game in the mid game. Able to get to 125 CS and that roller without dying yet. So that's on very good track. Came through a couple of minutes ago. So we'll have to see when that one's fully stacked up. About the 24 minute mark, I believe. Yeah, it does have a few stacks already. So it sounds about right here as Beast with that Cinder Hulk and the Sight Stone. Very, very tanky. About 2,000 health here as Barker with the Athenes on oh, Holy Grail. Crystal. Oh, forced to use the flash. That is very unfortunate. Final hours pop. The condemn against the wall, though. Dredge line comes through as Crystal trying to kite around, but it's not going to be enough. Oh my goodness! The turret, and he survives. Whoosh and with the heal, beautifully places MLXG. He's going to get exhausted as there's the pre seeker from Beast. He's going to net him that one. And it's the assist as well, but Ella now finds himself a whole bunch of friends. Oh my goodness, the red buff gonna burn him down. Beast now trying to answer this one. Preseeker over the wall. Barker finds himself in an uncomfortable position. Beast picks up Lamb, but Assassin answers the kill. And Sky may just cancel the teleport. He is going to, but Beast super tanky here. Assassin might be in trouble. Blue buff may not be enough here to give him enough mana back to, for this fully stacked Riftwalkers Beast. Finds him yet again. The last Q picks it up with the Cinderhawk. Actually, it's Flandre trying to get himself the extra rage. As this is ridiculous. Flashes over. Sky picks up the kill. Crystal, he's alive again. And Beast coming back through once more. The Arcane smash Crystal. Will he have the rend? He will. It'll be three auto attacks and a rend. And he picks himself up that one. Now Marshall he poises his way over the hill. They're not going to be able to pick up another kill. And that was the most extended fight. Uh, we've done this whole season. This yeah, whole it series. certainly is. So everyone except for MLXG, I believe, dies on King's lineup. Well, yeah, definitely not MLXG. So that was a 5-4-4, four, four, I think, in the end, in Snake's favor. Yeah. Wait. No, I think it was a 5 for, It was uh, in four, King's four. favor. Was it? Well, I mean, I think Snake were ahead by a kill. Yeah, maybe it was. Maybe it was a clean ace for four. Sort of. A semi-clean ace. <laughs> the rotate, the substitute's halfway through. It was like a tag team match. He was like, I'm back in. Tell me in, coach. I'm ready to die. That seemed to be pretty much what was happening. That was a very, very strange combination of events. I don't think it really... Yep. I'm just confused. It's nice cool. grouping coming through from Snake, but I think they've actually been caught out. Death char uh, depth charge is a back available. If they had gone for a little bit more of a heavy flank, they might have been able to catch someone, but... King, once again, they, they're very hesitant to pull the trigger early on in matches. Yeah, or unable to really decisively work out when they have an advantage in these games, but Pierce not going to find another Ren target there, as the Boomerang does. Prey Seeker as well. Fair bit of poke actually available for this stake lineup, but Beast 
Gets caught by the ultimate, oh. but MLSG doesn't find much. But Barker gets dredge lined as Sky makes his way in. There's a force pulse onto no one in particular. Crystal gonna take down Sky though. Snake trying to make this fight happen as Meganar's here as well. This turret on very low health as the Sand Soldier's trying to get something happening. Snake, they pick up one for nothing. No teleport available from Sky. That's gonna mean this out of turret. Yeah, it certainly isn't. One thing. Got to criticize Liam on not exhausting a priority target as he went in. You saw how much return damage came through. Was completely out of control. They were just able to explode Sky. Really got to, if you get a catch, commit to it. Use everything. Yeah. Get in there and try and make the team fight your own. And he had something in his toolkit to be able to throw an extra advantage to his team and wasn't willing to pull the trigger. Yeah, well, I think hasn't been willing to pull the trigger has been largely the name of this series thus far for King, but Beast trying to defend out this turret. Doesn't need to, his crystals there. Does have that hurricane available. 2.5 thousand gold as well. So that Bloodthirst are very, very close. They have a great track here onto Flandre if they're able to get in. Oh, he Good get ward means he's spotted, ward. but that is a huge minion wave that the whole of the snake lineup is going to miss out on. Probably give over the turret as well to King. So that's a good movement around the map. Probably need to slow down hitting it so it kills some more creeps, but they're not going to. Just commit to taking that one out. Yeah, they don't want to waste any time. Of course, the rest of the members of Snake could have potentially been around the corner. They didn't have too many wards in that river. I mean, in sorry, in that lane moving up towards there. So not wanting to take too many chances. But Flandre, as you mentioned, able to pick up this whole wave, continue having quite a large advantage. And this is what we've seen here through from Flandre. Although he may have forgotten how to build the uh, Frozen Mallet, which is what he started off with in the first match, I believe. Who, of course, doesn't build out of that anymore. Certainly doesn't. Build out of a pickaxe. Probably my most hated item in the game currently. The pickaxe? No, Frozen Mallet. No, I was going to say. Like Frozen Mallet. Like. No, I, I think that you're a bit biased. I don't know what Frozen Mallet ever did to you in the past, but I think it's fine. You also think Essence Reaver is a good item? No, I just want it to be a good item. Because I think it's fun. Like Ginsu's Rage Blade, why isn't that built more? That item's really fun, does heaps of stuff. It does, does a little bit of everything. Precisely. It even has one of those cool... Like, I know, it's got where, like, Surge. It it's the way to pick Surge after it left the game. I loved that summoner spell. We see Snake, they hit back with a fantastic movement in this map. Able to take out the top turret. In response, King trying to get two for one, but they've been completely caught out of position. No teleport available for Sky as well. Means they really have to hightail it up here and try and get in position to defend this second turret. Otherwise, they're going to lose an inner. Look at Flandre. He's got that rage readily prepared now, sitting in this brush, trying to keep himself available. Nice wave clear attempt there from King. Try and keep this one happening. Death Sentence now to be threatened from the dark. As Flandre needs to try and hit something. I don't know whether there's some Krugs available as he throws out a boomerang. He needs to try and get back there. Oh, that Death Sentence was so incredibly close as Flandre now able to build his rage even further. Assassin with the Force Pulse able to clear out some health on some of these minions as Woosh now able to clear them with his auto attacks. And, and meanwhile, yeah, bottom lane, Sky. Sky, wow, able to get some work done down there. Yeah, and there's the teleport coming through as well. There's the Chilling Smite, breaks him out as he comes through trying to twist an advance onto Beast. Flandre looking for this one at the same time as the rest of Snake are going to disengage. The Flash to come through. There's the Flash on Burrow, though. They're trying to get Flandre into this one, who's turned back to Mini now. Probably better for the chase. And Beast, they pick up the kill. Yeah, they certainly do. But there was an option there for King to maybe engage a little bit harder in the mid lane. You got Moby Boots on a Nautilus, as well as all of his summoners available. Might have been able to pull the trigger. Why do you need more movement speed? You just press R on someone, don't you? can do that. Yep. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I feel like King, they could just engage when they feel like it. Liam does have that option. But look, it's probably not true. I think just pressing R on anyone's probably a bad idea, but still. It did look dangerous having two teleports down to that bottom side. Flandre is just going to continue pushing this one out. Assassin now waiting in the wings looking to get something done, but Flandre senses it. Knows that there's quite a few members off the map, but sees them clearing out some vision. And it's not going to be Woosh, and he's got a lot of health. 
Should certainly be okay. does. So we'll see exactly how that one works out. And as we take a look around the uh, map for some items, this guy has finished up his Frozen Heart. He's a little bit tankier than he was before. Also has the makings of potentially a Warmog's armor coming through there, although it's probably just a Righteous Glory coming through. Not going to be picking that one up on MLXG. We actually see some jungle Gragas is going for that one. It helps out there yeah. initiate with their body slam, able to get in there, get a priority target back with that barrel. Exactly the same item build coming out of Assassin as we saw in game two with that Fiendish Codex as well as a needlessly large rod being picked up at the same time. And whoosh, he's been consistent. Nothing but consistent in his pick and his item build. Yep. The entirety of this series. Really wanted to see that Zephyr build that you were talking about. And with five vein games, I thought, you know, we had more of a chance. Not going to be happening here. He's stalwart in his decision making as far as that build is concerned. Yeah, stubbornly so. Exactly. You know, surely there's a different build for a different game. It's not the exact same team comp he's playing against. Well, look, I mean, can't say that without also saying it's the same with Crystal, who's built the same items. Different orders, though. So that is definitely um, a different thing there. As actually, Woosh is going to pick up the QSS very early on here as Snake, five men strong here in the mid lane, the inner turret under fire. They're going to be able to take that one down, and King... A little bit out-rotated there as Sky in that top Whoa, lane. Oh, the damage on Talaeum was massive at the end there. Yeah, this is the Azir. This is Barker now with a needlessly large rod as well as the Athenes on Holy Grail. <laughs> Doing some work. Yeah, and they're rotating once again around the map. They don't have the teleport this time to go around and kill Sky, but maybe they don't care. Maybe they're just happy to take the objectives instead. They're worth more gold, of course, so I like the mix-up here. Yeah, and there's the flash from MLXG. Does manage to get Beast back into the team, but it's probably not the target they want. Crystal going to use the heal there as the depth charge comes through, but doesn't lock him down for too long. Beast, he's going to fall as Woosh coming through there, but Lamb's going to fall down as well because Barker, beautiful use of the ultimate. There's the flash into the death sentence on Sky. The heal from Woosh as they try and turn this one around. Snake, their health bar's getting very, very low, but Woosh and he gets exhausted and they turn it around. Crystal, very, very low. MLXG gets caught. As Assassin comes in the back line and assassinates Crystal, Sun Turret is going to fall down there in the mid lane, and they're looking for this Cassidy, the only member of Snake that's alive. Yeah, only member of uh, King, King that's, alive. Sorry, that's alive. He might My have found loose. Flandre. No, Flandre just looking tasty as they're now closing the net. Everyone's so low that they don't want to commit to this kill. They'll probably leave it for Beast. Yeah, well, oh my goodness. That death sentence was beautiful from Ella. But it is going to mean that Assassin wasted enough time that the rest of his team is now up. Yeah, and Snake no one, not going to be able to get too much but this dragon. No one able to go back and heal, more importantly. So we'll see whether maybe the supporterless Lamb can delay for long enough to get them in a position where they can fight. He scouted them out. So we'll have to, have to see if that is the case. It's not. No, it's not going to happen. It's a Baron. Is. Oh, is that going to be the call here? Of course, Flandre does have the teleport available. It's a bad call, but that is the call they're going for. Ah, right. Okay. Good, good, good. I didn't think that you were calling the shots for them. Otherwise, I feel like they would have gone more aggressive game too. <laughs> <laughs> but QSS going to be up yet again for Woosh. Doesn't quite have the Ghost Blade they're, available. They're only in a few two mines again. It's like we've come 360. We have. It's like it's a cycle. We started at one point where... Unwilling to make early game decisions, cost them a couple of times. Once again, that seems to be where we're at. And they definitely got it under control. Very convincing in game three. The most decisive we've seen Snake play. King. Uh, King play. And now, on the back end of game five, once again, not willing to make a call. It has been very, very strange, but it's all come down to this. And King, they can't do that. They can't fall back into old habits after everything was going so well. Two games in a row. Yeah, so now the Siege starts in top lane, and this is one thing that they do relatively well with Barker being able to shove them back underneath the turret with the knockups that come through, not to mention the fact that all of their champions apart from the Rek'Sai are ranged so they can get the pot shots in whenever they want. And you feel without the flash engage coming through from MLXG, there's really nothing that can catch them out. They'll probably pick this up for free. Yeah, and Crystal... This is the story now. He's got the last Whisper before Woosh had it. And last time, they were on exactly the same item timings coming through for these AD carries. This time, Crystal with a clear advantage in that department. They're able to take down their second inner turret. Five turrets now to two in advantage for Snake. 
5,000 gold is the lead, and after that first dragon going down to King, it's been monopolized now by Snake. Yeah, and a relatively large wave formed in the bottom lane. It's now pushing back, so they need to send someone to shove that a little bit harder because with the Baron damage that comes out of the likes of an Azir, not to mention the fact that Crystal can secure it quite easily and they have the tanks to be able to get there for days, they're going to start it up. Yeah, and Flandre just trying to be bodyguard here. He's going to discover Lamb. As the Megan, yeah, in there. yeah, Meganar's coming through here as well as he's just going to take the lantern out as well, and that's going to be the rent to secure it. King, now you're going to engage after that comes through as Barker creates a lot of distance after that death charge comes through. Beast going to get destroyed in this fight, but you can see, look at the rent damage. That's a beautiful Empress divide. So much damage with these sand soldiers. The rent comes through. Woosh trying to make a hero play, but he's going to get speared to death and lay him. Now running for the hills as Assassin. He's got a decent health bar on him. No way he can go in on this team. Yeah, definitely not. And that was once again all about Baka setting up the perfect wall Beautiful. across everything. Crystal got about four free auto attacks, hit the Ren button, and everyone just died at the same time. It went from looking like a very good fight for King to an absolute disaster. Yeah, and the Baron went down just before it as well, like they prepared earlier. You've got the inhibitors falling, and Snake managed to take the objective. They take the team fight, and they take down the turrets. Six, six now to two. They're not going to be able to get anything else other than this blue buff. But Snake now with a whole lot of money in their back pockets. It's looking like dangerous times here for King. And once again, they just prepped the map so well. The bottom wave, it's pushing back. They're going to be able to run up, meet that about halfway down the lane. Uh, lane. Build it up slowly, ride a couple of minion waves into that tier two in the bottom, which is the only remaining outer. If King fight that, it's suicide. If they wait too long, super minion's going to be streaming into the base. Everything just falling into line for Snake. Yeah, really beautiful. And we have explained uh, times before that Snake's minion wave control has been beautiful over the season. Yeah, it certainly has. And you can see the big minion wave there, that's going to be cleaned out, which just means that as the minions come through, another wave will join it. They'll get at least two waves into that turret, you feel. And wow, I, King, they're just backs against the wall. They need that hero play that you keep talking about. It's probably going to come from MLXG and Assassin if it comes from anyone. Woosh, a little bit too far behind this game, has only just finished up his Yomus, has been hindered by that QSS, you feel. Yeah, he just hasn't been able to make the impact that he has over the last four games. This is the first time that he's looked unconvincing on the vein. And King, they're going to have to concede this turret. There's no way, yep, and they so are going to. There's one minion wave there. You see the minion wave just behind it. I'm actually surprised they cleared it so quickly because they're going to hit one after the other now. It's not going to be together. But you see, they've definitely got a good siege here. Yeah, and Flandre about to go into Meganar as well. The saplings come out, but here's the other minion wave coming through as well. Half health now on this turret. Super creep streaming into the mid lane. As you can see, the siege turret doing some work there. And Crystal, that was a whole lot of auto attacks. Four man that was huge from Beast. The Nah four man as well. Look at the box down and look at this damage coming through from Barker doing so much work. Beast now trying to zone out MLXG, but this fight is well and truly over. Snake, they're going to take down the inhibitor and they're going to take down the base. It looked, it took a whole lot longer than we were expecting after game one, but Snake, they take the five game series after the final one. 14,000 gold the lead. And man, now, this was not what I was expecting out of this series. And full credit goes to King. It was a beautiful attempt at. Um, Victory after those two wins, but man, Snake, they look too strong in that last one. Yeah, it certainly was. In the last game, they were able to get the edge, Atlas, but as you said, throughout the entirety, it was a back and forth. Yeah. Snake just threw one too many big punches, and King weren't able to recover. Their objective control around Dragon and Baron in the final two games were really what sealed it for me. That's what they've done very well. Fight over objectives. They need to draw people out in the yeah. open get these scrappy team fights that they seem to excel in. When you fight, play around turrets, Snake don't look as promising. When you're playing around those open field objectives, they look fantastic. Yeah, and they're able to prepare the map as well. I mean, we saw the fact in that game four, so beautifully done to be able to transition from fifth dragon into a one team fight, into a Baron, into the rest of King's base. It was just beautiful to see because they created